Hey guys, in today's video we're going to try to answer is 16 gigabytes of RAM enough for content creation? I just purchased these two sticks of crucial memory sticks to see if it makes a huge difference in my existing 16 gigabyte configuration which is also dual channel 3200 MHz CL22. So without further ado, let me get right into the details. Alright guys, let's get started with gaming and gaming benchmarks. So we're going to look at Fortnite first. By the way, if you're looking at the results for 16 gigabytes, if you want to look them in detail, you can check out my laptop review, which is on the channel right up here. On Fortnite, we see a healthy boost of 33% increase in average FPS, as well as a 40% increase in 1% lows, which is intense and the gameplay felt immensely smoother than what it was in the 16 gigabytes. So definitely a plus if you are a Fortnite player. Next up, let's look at PUBG. We see a 22% boost in average FPS from 104 to 127. And then we see a 37% increase in 1% lows, which is also impressive, which keeps you above 60 FPS almost all the time which means low stutters and high stability when aiming. Next title is Rocket League and it showed the most improvement I've seen from going 16 to 32 gigabytes. Rocket League was averaging 216 FPS uncapped, maxed out with the 32 GB upgrade. We're now at average of 320 FPS, which is crazy bonkers because the screen on the laptop is just 144 Hertz. But if you want to connect a 360Hz monitor for some reason, you can definitely do this with this laptop and you can definitely get almost all out of it. What's also impressive is we also saw a 54% increase in 1% lows in Rocket League. And the 1% is at 191 FPS. Just imagine that you're never dipping below 191. Whatever you do in game, that is crazy. Next up is CSGO. I ran the community benchmark that was available to download from the workshop and the previous average FPS was 206 FPS, but now we're at 284 with the 1% lows also seeing a 7% increase while the average FPS increased by 37%. Let's look at Overwatch now. Again, maxed out. We were getting 168 FPS before, now at 200, up by 20%. On the 1% lows, you were getting 89 FPS, and now we're at 131, which is a healthy improvement of 47%. Then we look at For Honor, we were getting 127 FPS before, now 157, a 23% increase in average FPS, as well as a 23% increase in 1% lows. So next few titles didn't get affected very much by the RAM, but they are very graphically demanding, so I think the bottleneck is elsewhere in those cases. So God of War, you can see 7% improvement in average FPS, but oh, massive 29% improvement in 1% lows, which is great. Then we have Days Gone, where we see 8% improvement in average FPS from 72 to 78, and then a 51% improvement in 1% lows with minimum of 65 FPS. Then we look at the COD games. First up, Warzone. We're running 89 FPS on 16 gigabytes and now up 16%, 104 FPS and the 1% lows were 63 and now minimum 1% lows are at 28% higher than what it was before at 81 FPS. Same thing with Vanguard. We see a similar improvement of about 8% in average FPS from 91 FPS to 99, and then a 17% bump in 1% lows from 64 FPS to 75. So overall, gaming wise, I was not expecting it to be this massive because I was expecting maybe 2 to 5%, but on average, we are up 30 to 40% more FPS and a stable gaming experience, like aiming is smoother, everything feels smoother in the 32 gigabytes. Now let's look at some productivity benchmarks. Now, now these are the places you expect not much to change with RAM upgrade, right? But there are some interesting results up here. So the Cinebench R23 was scoring 1331 on uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, up now at 1346. 
that's a healthy increase on single core as well as it was scoring 7848 on multi-core and now it was scoring 8492 that's over five percent increase in multi-core performance that's pretty cool same thing with geekbench 1351 on single core 1409 on multi-core good healthy increase as well as the multi-core score was 5831 increased up to 6370 which is impressive then the benchmark that didn't see almost no difference were 3d marks time spy where the score was pretty much within the margin of error superposition benchmark had similar results with 4882 before and now 4884 one thing to note in 3d mark time spy though is that the cpu score went up by almost 10 percent it was 6195 and now it was 6611 and the graphics score was slightly lower at 7300 down from 7500 so that's one interesting thing to note but yeah those are all the benchmarks those are all the numbers but let's go beyond the numbers. All right, guys, enough with the benchmarks. Let's get into real world testing using DaVinci Resolve and how much difference it would make while using the application as well as delivering, so exporting your videos. So let's get right to it. All right, guys, to test the 16 gigs of RAM, which I have it configured right now, you can see they're running at 3200 megahertz. We got 16 gigabytes. Um, I'm gonna leave this open, open DaVinci Resolve and open an existing project that has heavy fusion stuff as well as a lot of memory intensive graphics. So you can see the whole project here. It has got a lot of titles, a lot of fusion stuff, even some animation. And the project is at 4K, 2x1, no optimized media, no proxy. And you can see we can still play back pretty fine. 16 gigabytes but we're gonna come back to this to see how it performs on 32 gigabytes if we open the class manager you can see our memory consumption is going up as we move through the project you can see 80 percent i'm going to try to re-render it to find out the export time you can see as we're exporting this video the memory usage is reaching to 88 89 percent seems like there is some sort of memory bottleneck because Windows is moving the required RAM into a page file. So you can see the CPU is not utilized 100%. Graphics card is going 50, 60, 80, 50, 60, 80. It seems like there is a memory bottleneck, but we'll find out the results as soon as I install the 32 gigs of RAM and we'll render the project again. You can see the GPU is trying to hit 100% but I think it's not being fed enough data from RAM in time. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out soon enough. That took six minutes and 17 seconds. And the actual video length is 13 minutes and five seconds. So that's almost more than twice as fast as real time, which is not a bad result. And that's using the NVIDIA encoder with H.264 enabled. So we're going to do the same test with 32 gigs of RAM and see if that makes any difference. All right, guys, I just installed the 32 gigs of memory. You can see it's showing 31.7. We're running at 3200 megahertz CL22, which is not the greatest timing for a desktop, but for a laptop, it's all you get. So just open the recent project that we just rendered. So I believe the CPU usage hasn't changed that much. I think we are utilizing the GPU much more efficiently because we have more headroom in RAM. You can see it's pegged at 92%. And bam, suddenly we were utilizing 22 gigabytes, 24 gigabytes. So see how stout we were for memory when rendering that video? Dang, look at that. Now we're using 26 gigabytes. And if we go to processes, it will show you that DaVinci Resolve itself is using 19 gigabytes, which is three gigabytes more than the full capacity of my previous memory configuration. That's crazy how limited it was with the 16 gigabytes. Let's see if that affects the render time at all. And there you go, it's complete. And it is a whole 30 to 40 seconds faster. 
but at the same time it's using roughly 80 percent of memory and we saw that it was using 90 to 95 percent of that 16 gigabytes so it was definitely starving for memory more memory definitely helped it in easing off and saving some time but i believe the memory bottleneck has been removed the bottleneck is now elsewhere that's why we are seeing the maximum possible time which is 5 minutes 44. to conclude is 16 gigabytes of ram enough for gaming or video editing or anything in my opinion the answer is no with the systems that are so capable including the one i'm using the 11th gen 11400h as well as the RTX 3060 here, they can overpower 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, you can definitely make do with 16 gigabytes, no issues, but in my opinion, is not enough. To get the maximum potential out of your system, I highly recommend that the minimum you aim for is 32 gigabytes in your next system where you're doing mixed workloads such as gaming and video editing. But if you're focused solely on gaming, running Discord in back, no OBS, no third-party applications running in background, maybe you can get away with 16 gigabytes of RAM. How much RAM do you have on your PC? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway guys, I hope that this video clears up any confusion regarding 16 or 32 or even 64 gigs of RAM for your next PC, whether it be a desktop or a laptop. Laptops these days can support up to 64 gigs memories because of DDR5. So smash that like button if this video helped you. Consider subscribing and dinging that notification bell just down there. Check out my other videos right up here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!